But what we're seeing now is that a lot of young people are not really getting involved in the peace movement, but rather the German military with their big ad campaigns in Mali, showing war as this kind of adventure camp, seem to have a lot of success. Where do you think this comes from, this need for war games? Well, I think, first of all, they have a very different budget to get their communication out there. But there are also a lot of Bundeswehr soldiers that uh, watch my videos. And I've spoken with some of them, they come back. And if you've really been to a war zone, you know this is not a war game. Instead, War is always something very destructive. In the best case, you come through because you're stationed in some place where nothing bad happens and you were lucky. But it can just as well be that you're stationed somewhere and suddenly a bomb goes off and that good friend that you spend a lot of time with, uh, his right leg is torn off and there's just blood squirting out. And you need to push his intestines back in his stomach because you got to take it along and so you take him on the stretcher and and suddenly in a, in a village people start shooting and you, you shoot back and you realize i just killed a child and i i didn't want that and you're traumatized i mean you, you got to be very clear about this that i know this from historical research war is always trauma there's no such thing as uh, i go to war and um, you know it's like a game like like entertainment and i'm just kind of a cool guy that does not exist the fact is, we have 20 suicides per day in the United States from war veterans. 7,000 dead per year. You gotta ask yourself, why are they killing themselves? Civil war conditions. Well, they've experienced things. They've experienced things that they can't process. They experienced this in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Iraq. And then they come back and they see all their friends in this shopping frenzy, um, buying cars and clothes and music and food, whatever. And somehow they think, well, what's, where, where's the real life? Uh, is it a shopping frenzy or is it shooting people or, or what? And they have completely lost their center. Um, they don't have any, any balance. I've also read books uh, about the Vietnam War where the soldiers write back home to their family and, and you, you always notice what's most important for the soldiers. And I'm only talking about American soldiers. For the Vietnamese, I mean, we have three million killed Vietnamese and for them, it would have been most important for the Americans to leave so that they can just spend their life in peace. But for the Americans, it was most important just to get home safe. And then to just spend a normal life with the people they love, with a wife or fiancé or father or brother or mother, just to have a normal life. Therefore, I, I don't believe that people who think about war for a longer period of time don't immediately understand that war is a big mistake. It takes a certain superficiality to believe war is not a problem. Then you've probably been taken in by some cheap propaganda from the Bundeswehr. And maybe you come into an area where you, you, you just trained and you can count that as, as fitness, exercise. But at some point when it comes to killing or seeing other people being killed, it immediately goes into the traumatic. And that's why I can only recommend to people that you read reports out of the war, or you meet people that have experienced war, and not watch just some propaganda video and think, oh great, I can fly a helicopter. And I say, you know, it's, it's totally open how this is going to develop in the future. I mean, soldiers that are serving in Afghanistan and are now looking into the details of 9-11 and understand the Bundeswehr is in Afghanistan now because of 9-11, and for 9-11, World Trade Center 7 is not resolved. That's when the cerebral cortex starts to get very active and you ask yourself, what's happening? What, I mean, what's really going on?